Good morning, Calvary greetings. I welcome you once again into the presence of the living God. And I pray that wherever you are, all over the world, the word of God this morning will meet you and it will bless you. Please avoid any kind of distractions. Listen for your own word because I am very convinced that God Almighty has a word specifically for you and for your family. So please pay attention to every part of the sermon. When you hear your own word, you say a loud amen, you write it down, and you turn it into prayers. The Bible tells us that be it unto you according to your faith. If you mix this word you're about to hear with faith, I can guarantee you that you will witness a level of joy that you have never before experienced in your life. So please lift up your Bible as we take the affirmation together. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I am about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, eternal seed of the word of God. My mind is alert, my heart is receptive. I will never be the same again. Never, never, never. I will never be the same again in Jesus' name. Amen. And why still standing? May I please ask that you open with me to Matthew chapter 5 and I will read from verse 44 to 48. Matthew chapter 5 and I will read verse 44 to 48. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you that ye may be the children of your father which is in heaven for he maketh a son to rise on the evil and on the good and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust for if you love them which love you, what reward have you? Do not even the publicans the same? And if you salute your brethren only, what do you more than others? Do not even the publicans do the same? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your heavenly Father which is in heaven is perfect. Beloved, this sermon is a truly a special one for you. I don't know what you are going through. I don't know what the condition is. But I pray for you from the bottom of my heart that your heart will receive the word of God and your life will follow the counsel of the Most High. Father, I thank you for the privilege to bring your word. I commit myself, Daddy, into your hands. Please anoint me with your word. Bless your people and take all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen. Please, if you can, uh, go down on your knees as we go to the sermon with a song. God all by yourself. God all by yourself. No, I bless your name. Worship you 
For you are God all by yourself You are God all by yourself You're still the same Our creation Will shout your name For you are God of yourself Oh God You are God of yourself self-existent God, the one that sits in heaven and rules in the affairs of man, the one that is the lover of your soul, your creator, your help, your redeemer, your shield, your beginning, your end, your all in all, magnifying this morning. Thank you, everlasting Father. Receive all the glory, Lord, in Jesus mighty name we have worshipped. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Please take your seat. The sermon is titled Unconditional Love. Unconditional Love. 
At this time in the world, millions of people have tested positive to coronavirus. But I believe this very moment, God is asking you if you are testing positive to unconditional love. It's a question that you need to ask yourself even as you listen to this word. Forget about coronavirus for the time being. Are you testing positive to unconditional love? I'll take verse 44 again of Matthew chapter 5. And it says, But I say unto you, Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them that despitefully use and persecute you. That is the message this morning, the passage that God Almighty has laid in my heart to speak directly to you. To speak to you as my brother, to speak to you as my sister, to speak to you as pastor over you, and to pray for you that God Almighty will soften your heart and you will decide to follow Jesus completely, even as he leads you this morning. Unconditional love. Are you testing positive to unconditional love? Number one, move into a life of grace. Move into a life of grace. You see, the reason why God said you should love your enemies is because we have moved. The kingdom of God has moved away from the dispensation of law to the dispensation of grace. Before Jesus Christ came, we were under the dispensation of law. And we are guided by the Ten Commandments that says, Thou shalt not, 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 thou shalt not. not." When you study Exodus chapter 20, verse 1 to 20, you will see the dispensation of law. Very direct, very strict. But the Bible said when Jesus came, he replaced the dispensation of law with the dispensation of grace. In John chapter 1, verse 17, John 1, verse 17, it says the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came with the Lord Jesus. So the dispensation of grace is where we are right now. But it's not an excuse for sin. Don't make that mistake at all. Because Romans chapter 6, verse 1 to 2, tells us, says, Shall we continue in sin and expect grace to abound? God forbid. The kingdom of God moved from the dispensation of law to the dispensation of grace but nothing in the dispensation of grace gives us an excuse to commit any sin i will explain to you as the holy spirit guided me in the difference between the two matthew chapter 5 verse 38 to 39 matthew 5 verse 38 to 39 and I'll read from him. Say, ye have heard that it had been said, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, that ye resist not evil. But whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, you turn to him the other also. That is a 
difference, one of the major differences between the dispensation of law and the dispensation of grace. Under the dispensation of law, it's an eye for an eye. Somebody smites you, you smite back. Somebody offends you, you retaliate. But under the dispensation of grace, when they hurt you, you take it without any quarrels. If they feel like slapping you on the third, on the next cheek, you turn to them and leave the matter to God. But there is a big difference also. Because the dispensation of grace may be gentle, but it is much tougher than the dispensation of law. I say it one more, one more time. The dispensation of grace may be gentle, but it is tougher than the dispensation of law. The person that fights is not necessarily the stronger person. The person that keeps quiet is not a weakling. The person that does not talk, that does not quarrel, is not a fool. Please hear me well. The dispensation of grace is gentle, but more powerful. The dispensation of grace is gentle, but more powerful. I remind you of the story that I've shared a few times before. The story of the ego, the mother ego, and the baby ego. One day the baby ego went out to look for food. And he saw the hen, a mother hen, and her chicks. He pounced on one of the chicks and started to carry it away. The mother hen started to shout. And you know the way the hen shouts? They started, the hen started to shout, started to flap her wings. But this baby ego did not bother. He carried that chick to the mountain top to meet the mother. And they had a good meal. The mother asked the baby ego, when you took this chick, what did the mother or the chick do? Oh, he said, she made noise, she jumped up, you know, she flapped her wings, she cried, she shouted. I said, don't worry, let us eat. Another day, the baby eagle went out and saw the mother hen and a set of chicks. Another hen. As she pounced on a chick and started to carry the chick away, the mother hen just looked up and kept quiet. When the baby eagle got back to the mother, the mother asked the same question again. When you carried that chick, what did the mother do? Ah, I said, this one didn't do anything. Was well, just looking at me as I was going. Ah, the mother eagle said, you are, we are in trouble. That chick has handed us over to God. I pray for somebody as you are listening this morning. May God Almighty move you to the dispensation of grace. That dispensation where you will not have to quarrel, you will not have to shout, you will not have to worry, you just leave everything in the hands of God. May that be your portion today in Jesus' name. Amen. Number two, every offense is against God. Every offense is against God. See, that is why God tells us, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for those that despitefully use you and persecute you. Because you are not the person they have offended. Every offense is against God. 
is against God. God is the one that has set the rules guide, guiding how we live in this world. So if anybody does anything to offend you, to go against the plan of God, don't worry, keep loving them because it is God they have offended, not you. I'll give you an example. In Psalm 51, verse 3 to 4, Psalm 51, verse 3 to 4. This was after David killed Uriah, the husband of Bathsheba. He sent him to the war front, gave him a letter to take there, and that letter says, whoever is carrying this letter, put him right in the front so that the enemy can kill him. David killed the husband of Uriah, at Bathsheba, and then took the woman to be his wife. You know the rest of the story? He slept with that woman before the woman became pregnant for him. David, number one, slept with somebody else's wife. He committed adultery. Number two, he killed the man. But when David went back to God in Psalm 51, verse 3 to 4, he said, Lord, this sin that I have committed is against you and you alone. David knew that the sin was not against Uriah whom he killed, neither was the sin against Bathsheba whom he used his position to sleep with. He said, Lord, I know that I have sinned against you. I pray for you this day, my brother, my sister, that you will learn to love because every offense is against the Lord and not against you. Second example. In Genesis chapter 39, verse 7 to 9. Genesis 39, verse 7 to 9. You see as they display it on the screen. The wife of Potiphar said to Joseph, Come and sleep with me. Come and lie with me. Come and make love to me. And Joseph responded and said, <laughs> Your husband has committed everything in this house into my hands. He doesn't even know what he owns anymore. He has trusted me with everything he owns, except you. Because you are his wife. How then can I come and sleep with you, the wife of my master, and sin against God? Joseph knew that if he were to go and commit adultery, he would not be sinning against Potiphar. He would be sinning against God. I don't know who it is that you think has offended you. But my brother, my sister, the offense is against God. So continue to love that person. Continue to pray for that person because it is God they have offended. And just in case you have offended as well and you say, oh, I have offended this person, I have offended that person. Well, you have offended God more than the person. And I pray that you will lift your eyes up right now and begin to say, Lord, I know it is you I have offended. It is not my mother that I have offended. It is not my father that I have offended. It is not my wife that I have offended. It is not my husband that I have offended. Lord, it is you that I have offended. Please have mercy. Go ahead and talk to God. Talk to God. Talk to God right now. Every offense is against the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Number three. Vengeance belongs to God. Vengeance belongs to God. You see, when the Bible says, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, it's saying, in other words, why are you trying to get even? 
Why are you trying to hurt them back because they did something wrong against you? You are not the judge. Vengeance belongs to God Almighty. So once again, I don't know who it is that has offended you or who it is that you have offended. But remember that it is God Almighty that will settle the case. Romans chapter 12, verse 19. Romans 12, verse 19. It says, vengeance is mine. I will repay. That is the Lord telling you, don't bother about retaliating. Don't bother about doing evil back. Leave the matter to me. Vengeance is mine. I will repay. What God is asking you to do is to continue to love. I don't know who it is that you are right now in some difficulty with, in some problem, in some quarrel, but the counsel of God for you is to continue to love, to continue to pray for that person, to continue to do good to that person, because God will set to the matter himself he will give everybody according to their works. So if everybody, if somebody thinks he's cheating you, just leave them alone. God Almighty will repay them for the evil that they have done. If you are cheating somebody, you are mistreating somebody, and you think you have gotten away with it, ah, may God have mercy on you. God Almighty himself we be the one that will return the evil that you have done upon your head and upon your family. But I pray that shall not be your portion in Jesus' name. So why don't you go ahead and say, Lord, if there is any way, Lord, that I have offended you, even if the person that I thought I offended does not take offense, even if the person that I thought I offended is keeping quiet, Lord, I know that everything is open unto you. Lord, have mercy on me. Go ahead and cry to God. He says, vengeance is mine. I will repay. Have you done something bad to somebody? Have you stolen from somebody? Have you hurt somebody? Go ahead and cry to God. Lord, please have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me. Because I know that vengeance is yours and surely you will repay. Lord, please have mercy on me. Cry to God. Cry to God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And then just in case somebody has offended you, why don't you also cry to God? God, give me the grace to continue to love. Give me the grace to continue to pray for this person. Give me the grace to continue to do good to this person because you are the judge, Lord. You are the one that set to score. You are the one that repays everyone according to their works. Just help me to continue to love. Help me to continue, God, to do good. Help me to continue, Father, to pray for this person. Help me to continue, Lord, to do what is right in your sight. Father, give me grace for unconditional love. Cry to God. Cry to God. Give me grace, Father, for unconditional love. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. And then finally, number four. Come out from the crowd. Be different. Come out from the crowd and be different. You see, when God said, love your enemies, pray for those that are doing evil towards you, it's because he wants you to be different from the rest of the people. And that's why he said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 45, let's read it together. Matthew chapter 5, verse 45. Says that you may be the children of your father, which is in heaven. 
For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and he sends rain on the just and the unjust. He says, God is saying that he is your father. And every morning when he makes the sun to rise, the sun rises on the evil as well as on the good. God does not differentiate. He says he makes his own son, son to rise on those that are good and on those that are bad. He says when he sends his rain, he sends the rain everywhere. The wicked ones receive rain. The good ones receive rain. That is why he is called a God of everlasting mercy. So what God is saying to you and I this morning is why don't you also be different? Because if you love only those who love you, then you are not different from the unbelievers. Look at verse 6, verse 46 and verse 47. For if you love them who love you, what reward do you have? For even the publicans, the unbelievers, they do the same. If you greet only people who greet you, what reward do you have? Even the unbelievers do the same. So God is speaking to you this day, my brother, my sister. Come out of the crowd and be different. That's a story that I had recently. It blessed my soul. He said that this woman who lives next to another woman, a very elderly woman, and then a middle-aged middle woman. The elderly woman somehow just dislikes this middle-aged woman. And then the middle-aged woman, every morning when he's going out, he'll say, good morning, ma. God bless you, ma. The woman will eat. He will not answer. After a while, the middle-aged woman said, okay, if this woman doesn't answer me, I will answer myself. So in the morning, she will go out when she sees the woman, ah, good morning, mommy. God bless you, ma. How are you, ma? Then she will respond, oh, it is well with you, my daughter. Go well. She is the one who is greeting. She is the one who is responding. Because she has decided to be different. I don't know what you are going through. But if you greet somebody and they don't answer, why don't you answer back? You will say, good morning, my brother. And if he doesn't answer you, you say, oh, good morning, my brother. Too. How are you? You answer yourself. Be different from the crowd. If you greet only those who greet you, how are you different from unbelievers? If you do good to only those who do good to you, how then are you a child of God? I pray for you from the bottom of my heart that this message will find a resting place in your soul and it will transform your life completely. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Let me wrap up. Verse 48 of that Matthew chapter 5. It says, do all these things so that you can be perfect even as your heavenly father in heaven is perfect. That is why this message, God asked me to bring this message to you. So that you can begin to live like a Christian. You can begin to conduct yourself like your father in heaven. Come out of the crowd and behave in a different way. Colossians chapter 1 verse 27. Colossians 1 27. It says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. So when people offend you and you strike back, where is the Christ in you? When people don't greet you and you to stop greeting them, where is the Christ in you, the hope of glory? My brother, my sister, that is the question God is asking you this morning. So I want to pray with you that may the power of God touch you wherever you are right now. And I pray that Jesus Christ will be manifest in you. Jesus Christ, the hope of glory. That from today you will love even those who hate you, you will love them. Those who are doing evil towards you, you will do good towards them. 
those who are cursing you, you will be praying for them so that Jesus Christ can be manifest in you. Jesus, the hope of glory. Cry to God yourself. Say, Father, please be manifest in me. Give me the grace to be different. Give me the grace to be perfect like you are. Help me to come out of the crowd and let Jesus Christ be manifest in me. Jesus Christ, the hope of glory. Cry to God. Cry to God. Cry to God. Cry to God. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. You are here hearing this message at this point and you have not surrendered your life to Jesus. I congratulate you because this message is a special one for you. Until you give your life to Jesus, you cannot have the power to love your enemies. That power cannot be present with you. So if you are one of those that you have not publicly surrendered your life to Jesus, wherever you are, right now hearing this message from the Lord in the next minute or so when I ask you to go rise up wherever you are you rise you lift up your hand and then you pray and say father please I need Jesus give me Lord this Jesus the hope of glory so that I can live a life that is peaceful I can live a life that is gentle I can live a life that will manifest Jesus Christ the hope of glory. And if you are already born again, but you know you struggle with this aspect of your life, you too will go ahead and rise on your feet. And you will cry to God and say, Lord, this message is for me. Help me, Father, to love those who have offended me. Help me, Father, Lord, to know that all offense is against you, Lord, and not against me. Help me, Father, not to repay evil with evil, but rather help me to love everyone so that they can see in me, Jesus Christ, the hope of glory. If that is you, you are going to talk to God and pray to God. Even as we take this song, I have decided to follow Jesus. Ahead and talk to God. I have decided to follow Jesus. No. 
us to follow you, Lord. Help us to follow you. The power to love unconditionally. Give unto us, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. If you are one of those giving your life to Christ today, I rejoice with you. Please send us your name. Send us your number to the email address, thelifegate at gmail.com. Or you can also send us through our WhatsApp number that will be displayed on the screen for you. I can guarantee you we'll get in touch with you within the next 24 hours. We'll be praying with you. And we know that God Almighty himself will perfect everything that concerns you. God bless you. Amen. Let somebody shout it loud. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope you were blessed by that message. Unconditional love.